Hello everyone, welcome back to another English online session. Today, I am going to narrate the sixth chapter from the text Footprints Without Feet. Every one of us have ambition. We all like to be something in our life. To be a doctor, engineer, IAS officer or IPS officer or a scientist. Here in this story also narrating the same. So to fulfill the ambition, what are the things we have to do? And the process of fulfilling an ambition. Here this story is narrating the life of Richard H. Bright, one of the greatest scientist. So how he became a scientist? Let's see in this story. So the name of the chapter is The Making of a Scientist. Richard H. Bright has received the Seal Scholar Award and the Skirin Plow Award for Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. It was his fascination for butterflies that opened the world of science to him. The story is about Richard H. Bright, who grew up in the town of Reading in Pennsylvania, USA. As he did not have much to do there, collecting things was his hobby. He used to collect butterflies as a child in kindergarten. Okay, let's see how this curious child who collected butterflies went on to become one of the greatest scientists of the world. Now let me give you a brief idea about the person who write this chapter. Robert W. Peterson uh, was an American newspaper writer who later became a freelance author of magazine articles and books, especially on the topics of sports and scouting. His 1970 chronicle of uh, Negro League Baseball, titled Only the Ball Was White, was hailed by the New York Times as having recaptured a lost era in baseball history and a rich facet of black life in America. Now let me narrate the, the summary of this lesson. Richard H. Ebright, along with his roommate, surprised the world at the young age of 22 when they explained the theory on how cell work. In a paper published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, this valuable magazine had published the work of college students for the first time. For Richard Ebright, it was one of the many achievements that he achieved later in his life. He says that all this curiosity started with the butterflies. Ebright grew up in Pennsylvania and was the only child of his parents. He could have not done much there as uh, there were very less people living there. He says that he could only do one thing alone and that was collecting things. As he had no friends to play football or baseball with. He had begun collecting butterflies, rocks, fossils and coins from the time when he was in kindergarten. He also used to keep on staring at the stars at, uh, and sometimes the, ho uh, the whole night as he was interested in studying astronomy. Yebright had always been curious to learn new things and had a sharp mind. His mother used to encourage him to learn. She used to take him on learning trips, used to buy him telescopes and other instruments that would help him in learning new things. So from this we can understand that his mother was a very strong supporter for him to learn new things. So as a, a lone child he is uh, not able to concentrate on other games or something he always he just find his own way to pass his time 
that is he has planned he started collecting things this is uh, and he has a uh, uh, lot of curiosity he observe things he stare at things so curiosity is very important uh, once you or once you want want to learn something you should have curiosity here the base thing of for him is curiosity his mother was uh, his only friend until he went to school after he started going to school uh, his mother would get his friends a home he and his mother used to stay together at night and uh, they used to do, uh, do and learn things together a bright who was uh, nicknamed richie by his mother uh, was her whole life and uh, support system after his father died when he was in third grade they used to do spend most of the evenings together if he did not have anything to do his mother would find him some task for learning he used to like the learning work uh, that he, his mother used to give him as that was what he wanted to do learn about uh, more and more new things he was a bright student as he used to score good in class and also was regular in his daily task so we understand that he is a very smart student and his mother uh, did everything uh, for him to improve his studies uh, creating new opportunities Uh, giving him new exposures to learn by the time he was in second class he had collected all the 25 species of butterflies that were found in his neighborhood he thought that uh, it would have been the end of his butterfly collection if his mother would have not got him a children's book called the travels of monarch 10 the book told how the monarch butterflies migrated to central america which was the turning point for ebright as it turned his curiosity towards science so here it is explained a turning point in his life the book his mother brought to him changed his perspective about things and he started be more curious about the life of butterflies and through that he developed interest in science at the end of the children's book that his mother had got him the readers of the book were invited to help the study of butterfly migrations They were asked to tag butterflies by Dr. Frederick A. Urquhart of the University of Toronto in Canada. Richie's mother uh, wrote to the doctor and soon he was attaching uh, these uh, tags to the wings of the butterflies. The person who would find a butterfly with a tag was asked to send uh, the tag to Dr. Urquhart. the butterfly collecting uh, season lasted for around 6 uh, weeks then ebright understood that if he kept on collecting butterflies one by one he would not able to collect many so the next step he took was that he decided to raise a flock of butterflies in his basement he used to catch a female butterfly collect its eggs and raise them in his basement through their proper life cycles then he used to tag the wings of the butterflies and would let them go there were thousands of monarchs in his basement growing in different life stages for many years soon he started losing interest in tagging butterflies as it was a uh, very slow and tiring process it also did not get him much response 
he said that uh, out of the many butterflies that uh, he tagged only two could be recaptured by people and those two were not more than 75 miles away from where he lived so he lost interest in uh, tagging butterflies because uh, he didn't get the expected result when he was in seventh standard he came to know what real science was as he lost at a county science fair it was a, a really sad feeling for him to see all other uh, people win something while he did not win anything he showed frog tissue slides under a microscope but realized that all the winners had actually tried to perform an experiment and not just make a neat display out of their projects. He had already started developing the competitive spirit inside him. Now he had decided that he would be making a real project for the next year's fair. He thought and realized that he had maximum knowledge about the subject of insects as he had been studying them for quite some time now. For the next year, he tried the theory that Viceroy butterflies copy monarchs. He put forward the theory that Viceroy butterflies looks like a monarch because monarchs do not taste good to the birds and birds like to eat viceroys. So the more the viceroy looked like the monarch, the less likely, likely it is that a viceroy would be eaten by a bird. He wanted to show in his project uh, that uh, would a bird eat monarchs or not. He found out that the sterling bird would prefer eating a monarch. Later research showed that the viceroys copied the monarchs. This project won, won him the first division in the zoology department and the third overall position in the county science fair. By this we understand that he has done a real-time project uh, and won prize as he wished the previous year. I am stopping the summary narration here. The balance part I will tell you in the next class. As usual, read the text. Don't forget to have a dictionary while reading. See you in the next class. Bye.